Um, how's everyone doing today? Mother's Day has just passed last weekend. I hope you had a very good Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all mothers out there. And today is also Nurses Day. So happy nurses to all nurses. So MCO has been going on for about two months now. Uh, how's all the parents coping out there? I'm sure that uh, you get to spend more time with your children, but at the same time, it must be very frustrating as well because uh, you spend more time with them, they might have behaviors and might be agitated and that testing your patience. But I guess it's a mix of both that you are having fun, but at the same time, <laughs> feeling impatient at times. So that brings us to our topic today, which is parenting special needs during this pandemic. So what are the new norms actually that we need to include in our daily routine now? Um, washing hands, uh, wearing masks, uh, temperature check, social distancing, and like waiting in very, very long lines, like going for appointment in hospital or going to the supermarket to buy food. So given all these circumstances, what are the things that we can do and tips that we can teach our children to adapt to this new norm? So, first of all, we can try to create a structure and routine at home. Some special needs children are not as flexible with changes. Although children are home every day, so they are at home, they don't have to go to school, but it's important for us to maintain a similar routine, such as sleeping and waking up at the same time, eating meals consistently like breakfast, lunch, dinner, eating at the same times, uh, schedule learning time, like a lot of schools and centers out there now are providing online learning, so it's important for us to set specific learning times for them. And of course, schedule some fun activities with your children and some exercises, which I can cover more about it later. So by having all this structure, you can see like this example in this picture, like routine before the bedtime is that you have to put on pajamas first, you use the toilet, then you can incorporate washing hands inside so they become a routine for them. Then you can brush teeth and drink water, read some stories, go to bed and sleep. So by having visual schedules, it's a more structured um, environment for the children and they are more comfortable with the changes being at home. Um, we can also include like hand washing and wearing masks at home so we can practice the skills needed before we send them back to the school. So, as you can see, uh, this is a visual schedule that you can teach your children to wash your hands. Washing hands is a very complicated task because it's not just open a tap and off it. So by having six taps here, you can teach your children to turn off the tap, put some soap, scrub hands, rinse, turn the tap off, and dry the hands. So the children know the specific steps needed without just turning on and turning off by washing them for one second. So reminders can be placed next to the sink so that the child can refer to it every time without you needing to prompt them every time. Okay, we can also use visual reminders like this to remind them to wash their hands when they play with the pets, before they eat, after you go to the bathroom, or after they cough or sneeze. Visual reminders like that can be placed at common areas at home so that uh, they will remind themselves whenever they look at this visual schedule. But once hand washing like this and uh, even wearing masks become a habit and a regular part of their day, so the kids will eventually practice it even after they return to the school. Okay, so next we will cover about waiting. Waiting is a very abstract concept, as you can see, because um, especially autism children, they don't understand what is waiting, and it's often very difficult to understand, like, how long do I have to wait? Where do I have to wait? And why do I have to wait? So a wait card like this in the picture can actually teach our children the concept of waiting, like waiting in lines for social distancing before I want to go and buy my snack. So instead of telling them like no, you are just telling them to wait. This card in their hand become a very tangible signal that they will eventually get what they want. Like I'm not telling you no, but you just have to wait in line. 
tasked with this practice, this routine can become more reassuring for them, for the children to be more compliant to wait in lines. Okay, the next one will be, I understand that many of uh, schools and centres are having Zoom online sessions now. So, to communicate with their friends, to catch up with their studies at school. So, video conferencing is a very fun way for children to keep in touch with their friends and peers. But many children out there may not know the rules to be respectful during, during online learning session, as this is a very new experience for them. So, a Zoom ground rule like this can be used to teach children on what, it, what is expected of them. Like, Whenever the teacher is talking, I cannot talk and I have to mute myself. I have to remember to turn on the video, be on time, prepare my materials beforehand. And it's good for adults to be present. So we encourage children to do the Zoom classes in the common area like living room or even at the kitchen so that you can look at them. And always teach them to be respectful so that not everyone will take turns to talk on the Zoom classes. Uh, by having this kind of Zoom ground rules, children will understand better like what is expected of them so maybe it will help them to sit nicely at the table instead of running around during zoom classes so due to this movement control order i understand that adults are having lots of changes like we get we don't get to go out so frequently we have to stay at home and work but the changes apply to children as well because they feel that um i'm being locked out at home now and uh, i cannot go out to play with my friends i'm so bored at home which they might uh, feel very lonely and lack of social interaction with others. So by having this structured uh, schedule and some visual, schedule, visual reminders, it will help them to understand better what is expected of them and they might probably behave better at home. Okay, so next thing, breaking the skills down. It's very important for us to break the skills down which I have covered just now. Like, uh, all the washing hands is something very Im like important and very simple. But for special needs children, it might be very difficult because they they don't understand. Actually, washing hands requires a lot of steps. So as I mentioned just now, we can teach them six simple steps. But at the same time, we can incorporate using prompts. There are different different kind of prompts that we can use to teach our children. So by the first thing, we can use like physical prompting. We can guide the child's hand to turn on the tab and then prompt them with our hand over hand prompt to teach them what is expected to do. But if by, by the time they are able to get the idea, we can move on to like modeling prompts. So it's like a parent demonstrate how to scrub their hands by scrubbing their hands in front of their child so that they can learn and see and do it together with them. Once the child master it, we can do like verbal prompts. Verbal prompts can be like telling specifically what to do. Okay, just tell them, okay, turn on the tap, get the soap, can scrub now, can rinse, and turn the tap off. And the less intrusive one will be gesture prompts. Like you can just point to the soap there and point to the tap without needing to tell them. But it's very important for us to teach them step by step by breaking the skills down and until they master the skill in total. How about wearing masks? I'm sure parents are like, puzzle how do I get my children to wear masks because a lot of children who has uh, issues with sensory processing might find it very very difficult to get their children to wear masks so we can also try to break the skill down like this so like having mask in front of the child but not touching it first and then we can touch the mask to the child's arm and then eventually move to the neck and then slowly we can move to the chin or mouth and then wearing the mask for 5 seconds and 10 seconds and the duration can go on longer. So we do this by slowly increasing the proximity and duration of the mask on each children's face. So by doing breaking the skills down, we can also pair it with positive reinforcement. So the goals are very simple as we can see during this uh, pandemic. We want them to be more comfortable in wearing masks and we want them to uh, wash their hands frequently and maybe before they go anywhere, they have to get their temperature checked. But how do we uh, encourage them to do it more is by having positive reinforcement. So children can be rewarded immediately with a strong reinforcer they enjoy. 
like you can practice uh, this and then praise them for their effort and being cooperative like good job um, you cooperate and you're willing to wear the mask for five minutes today then after that we can include their favorite snack like toys even hugs for them like anything that they prefer the goal is for children to be comfortable with all these changes but be be very sh like mindful to we try to reinforce every small step like just now when we put the step down each step they are able to comply and follow we can reinforce instead of just reinforcing the final result okay next as we are all very familiar with social stories because social stories help us to uh, teach our children about new changes and what is expected of them like in this current pandemic like why is it needed for us to wear masks and why is it needed for us to wash our hands frequently so i have an example of social stories like this it's a very general one that uh, teach kids like everyone gets sick sometimes the coronavirus makes people sick. It is caused by germs, but germs are very, very tiny and we cannot see them. Germs can make people feel sick. When people get sick with the virus, they usually feel bad. They feel like they have a cold or a flu, they might have a fever, they might have problems with coughing or breathing. Many people are getting sick from coronavirus. So this is a very general one, basic, so uh, our children can understand better what is coronavirus. There's also another one which I found that teach about social distancing. So this says like when lots of people are sick, social distancing can help me to stay healthy. Social distancing means staying away from busy places and other people. Activities, events or school may be cancelled to keep people healthy. So I may not be able to do my normal activities. I may need to stay at home so I can stay healthy or I may get upset or frustrated about not being able to do my normal activities. But it will be okay, and I can find other fun things to do at home. It may take a few weeks before I can go back to my normal activities. Actually, there are many social stories out there. Um, you don't have to create it by yourself. Uh, you just have to Google social stories like social distancing, washing hands, wearing masks, and you can, there are even YouTube social stories. So for kids that are not able to read, you can just play the YouTube video for them to watch a social story. Okay, next one. It's also very important for us to offer choice to our children because uh, children actually wants to make some decision. But as parents, we often want the best for our children because we think that we make the best choice. But it doesn't allow them to feel empowered or prepare them for adulthood because the power of a small choice can go a very long way. Choices can be as simple as allowing the child to choose the design or color of the face mask. Like they can choose, they prefer pink color, blue color, green color. We try to engage them as much as possible in the decision making process so they feel more excited to, to be in the process and want to wear the mask more. They can even choose the scent of the soap, what kind of smell that you want or the type of soap that they prefer for hand washing. By doing uh, steps like this, they can build more confidence and they can continue to build positive decision-making skills as well as teaching them the sense of responsibility. Additionally, uh, the children will feel like uh, their, their opinions and uh, thoughts are being valued because my, uh, my parents, my, my parents, like my mommy, recognize and acknowledge what I say. So by offering choices, we can uh, give children a sense of more of a responsibility and teaching them how to make decisions wisely. So, how about having fun as children? Not only like adults, children actually like fun. Like, I know working from home is very difficult for parents because uh, you have to do both. You have to work and you have to uh, take care of your children. But how about having have like at least 30 minutes if we are able to, to spend a one-to-one -one attention with our child because by doing so, they might reduce the uh, attention seeking behaviors which my colleague Yvonne have shared earlier about behaviors. So how to make it fun like hygiene? We can make a 20 second song for hand washing You can and your children can create a song and then whenever you try to wash the hands, uh, both of you can sing together. 
and then you can add the actions in as well like how you want to scrub your hair, how to wash the front, wash the back and then we can also make a game to see how like how few times we touch our faces like you can count for each other so the, the aim is to don't touch our face and the person who touch the face less can get a reward after that so we incorporate fun elements into uh, the new norms that are like wearing masks and uh, washing hands so what are the other activities that we can do at home especially like with special needs children it's found that sensory beans by using rice beans pasta and like uh, flour is very helpful for them we can place treasures in it and children have to touch the rice and beans to find the treasure by doing this it is good for them to calm their nervous system and bringing a sense of peace to the children like we can do other games like memory game snakes and ladders simon says can teach skills like turn taking counting and following directions while toys like play-doh uh, can teach them about the creativity it's also very sensory for the children as um, they like to touch the texture of the play-doh and arts and craft is very good for the children to build their fine motor skills so if you're able to do so at least half an hour or 20 minutes with your children your, I'm sure your children will really appreciate that um, this may reduce like inappropriate behaviors because they know that oh at least my mommy is very busy at work she still plays with me Okay, so next. So what happened if your child like is very stressed with the pandemic, like they will cry randomly or very anxious because they feel uh when adults around me are anxious as well, children will feel so. So we can actually validate their emotions. So we acknowledge their feelings at the moment, but not the behavior. Like example, you can validate the child that is sad or angry without validating their behavior of hitting so you can say i can see how angry you are right now a lot of people feel scared or people are very sad but it makes sense that you are feeling that way so by having this list like this it will actually teach uh, children what are the emotions like because emotion is a very abstract concept so we teach our children this how happy it is how angry upset or surprise so we can print something like this and teach our children when they are calm so that they can express themselves when they are very frustrated but after the breakdown what do you do then we can have a coping plan with our child like we can write down the warning signs the emotions like before the breakdown such as maybe your breath is getting faster your heart rate is increasing or you have palpitations so we teach children to like uh, understand and identify these signals before they are at the stage of breaking down and we also write down what are the steps for them for them to help to seek support when needed so they can create their own calm down kit like this there are the sensory objects that appeal to them let them decide which I mentioned just now they can have choices on what are the things that ease their nerve the most can have like stress relief balloons fidget spinner, like magic sand, stress box, slime, coloring books, bubble timer. So all these your children can pick by themselves so that the more they customize their own kit, the better for them to show that they take ownership of it. The kit can guide children through tantrums, panic attack, and managing their mood. Eventually, this self-regulation practice can become a part of their life and daily routine. And one final part, which I would like to say that it's actually parents you are very important because you are a role model for your child you have practice keeping safe distance and hygiene like you don't go out unnecessarily and you wash your hands frequently your child will learn from you because uh, our children they, they look at us and see us as a model at home so when you treat others with compassion especially those who are sick or vulnerable during this pandemic like there are a lot of people are not able to work now because of the pandemic uh, you can donate money or donate food to them your children will know that and they might have that in their heart and do the same as well and it's very important to take good care of yourself so you can support your children you can practice self-care skills uh, like relaxation techniques which my colleagues have shared earlier like Hazel or Sarah 
they have teach about how to do deep breathing, grounding, uh, mindfulness techniques, which uh, you can try to listen and learn so that you can calm yourself better when you feel frustrated or impatient. But remember that you are not alone in this because many people have the same fear as us. Well, find someone who you can talk to about how you are feeling and avoid social media that makes you feel very panicked because sometimes they are very uh, nervous or and, and anxiety provoking news that make you even anxious. So when your children have to adjust to a new routine or they are sensing anxiety around them, it is very normal that their progress may regress. But try not to overwhelm yourself by attempting to recreate all the service that your children are attending, like tuitions or therapy or like school teachers, because it's very difficult for you to do so at home. So you can just do the best with what you can and what materials you have. Most children are resilient and they will be okay. So by the end of each day, take a minute to think about the day. Tell your children about one positive or fun thing they did. But it's very important to praise yourself for what you did well today. Because actually you are a star for your children, just that you never notice or realize about this. So here is a poster to show you that what I have covered just now. Uh, so, as I mentioned earlier, we have to create a structure and new routine. Like, we should schedule, we should remind us to remind our ch children. Then we can break the skills down, like teaching them small steps, increase the proximity and duration of masks or hand washing and lining up. And after that, we reinforce their behavior. So we have to remind immediately and we set clear goals so that the child understands what is expected of them. Next, we can also use social stories. It must be short and simple, so uh, they are able to learn socially appropriate behaviors. Next, we can also offer choices. So you include them in the decision-making process, the child might feel more happy that they are involved in the process and it helps them to build confidence. Make it fun as well because children love fun, so we include hand washing, like wearing masks, so we can make songs or games into it, and it's very important for us to spend quality time with our children. Uh, next one will be validate emotions, which I mentioned earlier. So we teach them emotions, and we name and identify the emotions. And then the coping plan is to calm down kids, and what are the warning signs. And the last, last, last part, which I mentioned, is about role modeling, and take good care of yourself so that we can set realistic expectations and don't expect too much from our children. So I guess that is mainly the presentation I have. I will go through the questions now and see... I find my child having difficulties to concentrate on the task. They understand how to do it, but they get distracted to, the, to do them. What can I do to help? So actually, it's very common for like uh, children to... Uh, lose attention and concentration because... Uh, Especially children, it's very difficult for them to like five minutes at a table. So it's very important for us to break down the steps. Like we give them two minutes of table time. After that, you can have one minute of break. And we can keep increasing them by proximity. But by training that, they will be able to focus better. Like I have to spend two minutes at a table. Then after that, I can have my break. Then after that, we increase it to four minutes. After that, we increase it to five minutes. And gradually over time, the attention span uh, is able to improve. Mm. My boy keep tapping his tummy. Any reason? This one we have to understand better why is your boy actually tapping the tummy like is there any reasons 
uh, the behavior behind so I have to understand better like why is my my boy he tapping his tummy is he feeling anxious or is he feeling hungry so by identifying the behavior at the first place it will help you with the intervention after that but if it's like a attention seeking behavior we can try to uh, redirect them to something else like instead of tapping tummy I can redirect them to playing with a toy car or playing with a stress ball to redirect their attention so let's see Another question by Muhammad. I understand because my child is often very hyperactive. Does that mean that he has ADHD or ADD? This is very uh, difficult to say by just uh, answering through a webinar. Uh, children is very normal for them to be hyperactive because the children likes to play, like to run and having fun. But if you find symptoms of them having like inattention, like they have to sit still or they fidget a lot, they run around, you may try to bring them to see a clinical psychologist or a psychiatry in any hospital department for an assessment so that we can know better like if your child has ADHD or is it just a normal behavior. Okay, so I guess that's all for the questions for today. Thank you everyone for your kind attention. Um, it has been a wonderful time able to share with all of you and I hope some of you like are able to get some tips from this webinar today. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. we have, have another webinar and we will be doing this for the whole month. So please stay tuned for more webinars this week. Okay, bye.